channel. My name is Tammy Bashore. I am a writer, photographer, avid outdoors woman, and lover of two German short-haired pointers. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about whether or not German short hairs are aggressive. To answer this question short is essentially that German short hairs are not naturally aggressive. Um, they are not considered dangerous. They are typically very uh, gentle and good natured dogs. So that's the short answer to the question. Um, but I think that what we really need to talk about is how to recognize aggression and the different types of aggression so that you kind of know what you're dealing with when you see it. So there is dog to dog aggression that typically happens with same sex dogs. So um, oftentimes my male dogs approaching other male dogs, um, not so much each other. We haven't had that problem since the beginning when we first introduced them. So, but we do see it sometimes when there is dog to dog. I don't see it as often. Ooh. I don't see it as often um, with my two as I do in other people's dogs, but it can happen. So dog to dog aggression sometimes happens. Sometimes you might see dog to human aggression. I've never seen that with mine, um, but that's a type of aggression that can happen. Some dogs you may actually see with resource guarding. So this is one that could um, definitely be a potential with your German short hair. Um, early on when you have your puppy, there's a few things that you can do to help uh, keep that at bay, such as when they're eating, you can just put their hand, grab their bowl, put your hand in their food dish so that they get used to hands or things in their food dish and they're not so apt to be possessive of it. Um, you should stand in the room and talk to them while they're eating so that they're not so possessive over the area when they're eating. Uh, feed them treats by hand uh, so they kind of get used to hand and food interaction. Um, and then make sure everyone in your household is participating in this, that it's not just you, that even maybe your kids or your significant other is also participating in this kind of activity to ensure that they don't associate their food um, as something that they need to protect. It can also happen with toys. Um, so just like you would with anything else, you know, grab the toy, play with it with them, um, just so that they don't start acting like, um, they need to protect their food or their toys. You could get a territorial aggression. So sometimes I see it, especially right now, like when we're camping, um, a turkey went by earlier. So I heard growls at the turkey. Um, if someone walks by and they're walking their dog, they usually will alert me that somebody's walking by. So I will see some of that. Or if I'm at home and I have the front door open and we have a glass door up front so the dogs, as you've maybe seen on my Instagram stories, if you haven't, head over there. You can sometimes see me in our activities over there but uh, my dogs like to hang out in front of that glass window and watch people go by and every now and then they will bark if there's a delivery person or even just anyone honestly walking by and so I kind of know that somebody is out there. So they can be a little bit territorial when it comes to um, their home. There can be a pain induced aggression. So they might have dental pain or some other pain. And so they they don't want you to come near them for fear that you might make it worse. Uh, so there could be some sort of pain. They could be frustrated and that can create a level of aggression. Um, and then there's also like maternal. So if you have a mom with puppies, um, they can be very protective of those puppies and may um, have some sort of aggression there. So those are kind of the eight essentially different types of aggression that um, that I've kind of learned the most about. Most aggression happens when they're puppies and it's just sort of carried over to adulthood. Um, it can typically be caused as they get older by triggers. So whether it's an abuse trigger, if you maybe have a rescue, um, you may see that they have some triggers and that could be something that happened in their previous life before they got to you. Um, so it could be an abuse trigger. It could be just fear, um, maybe an incomplete socialization. People didn't spend enough time socializing their dogs around other dogs and people. Um, some sort of issue, issue from their puppyhood, some sort of possessiveness, any of that could be a trigger for them that causes aggression. And it typically starts early on as a puppy, which is why it's so important to work with your puppies and not neglect them. So there's two different ways that we look at aggression. So there's true aggression, something that we really need to be careful of. And then there's the perceived aggression. And so your first step is figuring out, sorry, I have bugs that keep like biting my ankles. <laughs> so I keep itching. So it's first figuring out is this a true aggression that I need to deal with? Or is this something that is just perceived? Um, so just understanding the situation before you take action is really important. Growling doesn't always signal aggression. Sometimes growls happen when you play 
Um, but you knowing the difference between a play growl and a growl that happens when they feel threatened are two different things. So that's something you'll want to learn right away is to pay attention. How do they growl when you're playing tug of war with a toy? Um, and how do they growl uh, when they see something as a threat? There's a few signs that you can look for when it's true aggression. So you're going to look for a stiff body. You may have ears that are pinned back. You may have um, growling, as I mentioned before. They may show their teeth in this instance. Um, there may be a level of biting or snapping at you that you might see. Um, they may be standing really tall and really rigid. Their tail may be raised slightly. You'll see their legs kind of be a little bit more stiff. Um, their nose might even be wrinkled so look for that here where they're like snarling and they um, will wrinkle their nose just slightly um, so those are some things that you can look for when you really see true aggression versus like perceived aggression is really going to be more of like a play biting where they actually don't chomp down um, in our puppies my husband always encouraged me to put my hand in their mouth as puppies and to kind of grab the jaw, just kind of play with it so they get used to um, having a soft bite, which is what we want in our hunting dogs anyways, because they're handling birds. Um, so that's typically why we've done it is to keep their bite soft, but it also serves a purpose that you can kind of tell the difference between a play bite and something that obviously is more serious. You might see play growling, which typically happens while they're still, their body is moving and a little bit more loose. Um, they typically won't show their teeth teeth or snarl um, or wrinkle their nose when it's play growling you'll just hear kind of a growl um, as they're playing but if you see true aggression that's when you're going to want to really just jump in and take action we have to do something when there's true aggression so that it doesn't progress into something worse that then ends up um, into a situation that you don't want to get into with your dog if you're not sure what is causing aggression in your dog, it's okay to go see a vet because it could be medically based. It could be a dental issue that you can't see. Um, it could be some sort of a UTI even um, can cause aggression in some dogs. So it could be something medically related that your vet needs to check out first. And if it isn't medically related, they may be able to refer you to some sort of behavioral vet, a dog or a vet that can handle um, dog behaviors and help them get it corrected. So don't be afraid to seek help. We don't have to fall, figure out everything on our own when it comes to dogs. Um, there's so many experts out there and um, I rely on experts anytime I'm trying to understand something or do something. And so um, I don't think we should be afraid to reach out to those people, find those professionals. Most aggression is rooted in fear. So ensuring that we're not punishing our dogs or being aggressive in our punishment to correct aggression because aggression won't correct aggression. And so how we are correcting our dogs becomes important. And so just like they can learn how to deal with aggression or not be aggressive, we as owners can learn how to encourage their behaviors and encourage the correct behaviors by working with professionals um, that can teach us that. Don't try to treat it on your own. There's so many people out there that can help us make sure that our dogs are happy. Dogs want to be happy. They don't want to be aggressive. Um, and it's definitely most often a learned behavior and we just have to work to kind of course correct to go a different direction. Um, my boys, as you have probably also seen on my Instagram, love to growl while they play, whether they're playing together or playing with us. And so I definitely have learned the difference versus like this morning when a turkey went through our campsite and the teeth were out, the nose was scrunched and they were snarling at that turkey that turkey had gotten into their space. So you'll get used to it. You'll learn kind of the differences in what you're looking for. Um, and like I said, it's okay to find someone to help you if you can't figure out how to fix what's happening. Those people are out there. So I hope this helps you um, have a happier, healthier, playful dog experience. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.